Welcome to Casebag Watches, my name is Tim and in this video I can present you a very, very special guest. I had my portion of luck and so I could get in possession of the original Beobachtungsuhr from 1944 with the original strap, by the way. Believe it or not, here it is. This is not a reissue, this is not a fake, this is not a copy, this is the real veteran from 1944 from World War II. And if you don't know what a Beobachtungsuhr is, then please check out my video where I give a little bit more background. And so here only the information that the B stands for Beobachtungs, which is observation, and Uhr is watch. Beobachtungsuhr is then observation watch and it was in use during World War II by the German Luftwaffe. And now here it is. And I tell you how I got this at the end of this video. It's, it's an interesting and funny story. And then I contacted LACO, the modern company LACO, which is still in business. They still produce their timepieces. They still produce reissues of this watch. And I asked them if they can send me a modern LACO, a modern LACO B Uhr for a comparison of the old from 1944 and the modern from 2020. And they liked the idea pretty much and they sent me a original. They call it the original because it's very close to the original. And this is the LACO Leipzig. This is the LACO Leipzig. Thank you very much, Sarah Roman, and thank you very much, Laku, for sending this in. And we have another watch, because the owner of the original, original Laku watch put another watch in the parcel, another reissue, and I will show you this interesting watch as well. And so we can make a really great comparison of all these watches in the light box. I will open the original, original, so you will have quite a sight. Okay, here we are in the light box. I have a little Dunlop guitar pick, and I think you know what I'm going to do with this pick in a minute or in two or in three. And so let's begin with our comparison. Let's begin with our review here of three watches. We have the original. LACO 1944. This is um, the reissue of this watch here made by Time Factors. Made by Time Factors. And this is the LACO Leipzig. And I think we start with the original, right? We start with the original from 1944. Let's put this side. Okay, let's begin here with the detail we see first, and this is the crystal and then the dial. The crystal is an original condition, as you can see. It's plexi, it's scratched, it's not polished. It would be easy to polish, but the, um, the owner didn't want that, and I can I can fully understand him. He wants the original condition, and that's how it looks like. This is the original condition from 1944. The dial now is a so-called B dial. There are A dials and B dials, and on the B dial you find the minutes in the outer ring here and here in the inside in the inner circle are the hours and a A dial shows the hours here. And you may also notice that there is massive loom on the dial, massive loom. And we are speaking here about a radium. This is real radium. So this is a very dangerous substance when it's exposed. So many watchmakers refuse to work with radium. And as you can see on the hand, there are parts missing. Part, radium parts missing and this is the danger. If it's under glass and if it's intact, it's not dangerous. But if you have some particles on the table, of course, then this would be very dangerous. The half-life of radium is, I think, 1,600 years. And so there is still radiation. There is still radiation. So it's not recommend to put this thing on your uh, next to your bed. But for instance, if you are a smoker, then the risk of your cigarettes is way more dangerous than the, than the risk of this amount of radium. And on the dial you can also see that legibility here was, was the key factor they, they wanted to reach. Black dial, so there is no distraction from a dial color. The numerals are very big, the indices are clearly visible. And imagine this thing in a new condition, then everything, every numeral, every index would be um, still brighter. The next thing we see is the crown, massive crown, massive onion crown, and very, very comfortable to, to manipulate, even if you have gloves on. I will set the time and everything in a, in, a, in a minute. Then the next thing is the case. This is stainless steel, but I think it's sandblasted. I think it's sandblasted. You may notice that the thing is huge. We're talking here about 55 millimeters case diameter, 55 millimeters. The height is 22. 21 if I recall correctly and the luck with is 26. So massive watch 
but it was supposed to be worn over your jacket over your pilot jacket so it had to be very big and of course you have more legibility with a very big watch even if you are in a dark cockpit the case back is interesting because many people think that all those numbers you see on modern reissues are here directly on the case back but as you can see it's not you find only one number and i will explain you this number in a minute but now let's speak a little bit about the strap as you can see very long very long again supposed to be worn over a jacket and so it had to be long because we're talking here about a thick leather jacket with thick gloves and so it's very rare to find those those watches on an original strap but as you can see leather can survive decades if, if it's well made if the product quality was good then it's it definitely can survive decades. You see rivets here, rivets to make it extra tight there. The clasp is a type with some sort of, I don't know how to call this in English to be frank, this tube here. But as you can see, very substantial. And if you compare the size to, a, let's say, normal size of a watch, then it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I'm wearing a Rolex date just from the 80s. <laughs> you can see quite a difference, quite a difference. Okay, now let's operate the watch. Um, it's very simple. You can, it's hand winding, of course. It is a chronometer, by the way. So very precise. And this feels like winding up a tank. I'm not lying, you need force to do it. And it takes its time before the second hand starts to run. Now it's running. But let's give it a little bit more. Wow, look at this. Look how slow the second hand is. This is a very slow movement, maybe 19,000 beats or so. And imagine the precision which is needed to make such a slow movement a chronometer. So very, very great. Look, and again, the, the feel is amazing. The feel is like winding up a tank, really. And then you have position number one. Again, you need your force to, to pull it out. And now you can set the time. Like this. This feels, by the way, normal. Pretty normal, pretty soft. Okay, but now it's time to pair this with that. The owner told me that it's very easy to open the case back because it's an old watch and it's a snap case back and so um, they have the tendency to, to come loose very, very easy. And normally I open watches with a cheap kitchen knife or soft steel, but this is a borrowed watch and I think I have to be extra careful and so the pick. Maybe I can do it with a, with a fingernail, by the way. Sometimes you can do it with a fingernail. In this case, not. Okay, let's do it with a pick. And there it is. Now it's open. Now it's open, focus. Ooh, I'm a bit, bit excited. Normally a watch movement doesn't look so clean, but as I said, it was serviced five years ago and it was cleaned and everything, and there you can see the beauty. There you can see some details. There's Lacco marked there. Lacco, 22 Steine. Steine is stones for in, in, in German, so they mean jewels. There is a little number here. And the number you find again on the inside of the case back because here are all the informations. By the way, look at the wheel here. Now you can see. This is the beauty of big movements. You can see everything working really. Crazy. But let's discuss a little bit the case back before I close it again. Here you can find all those informations. There you can find Beobachtungsuhr and Bauart means version. And this is Durovi. Durovi, by the way, is the, the, the manufacturer of the movement. And you find here Geräte Nummer, which is um, yeah, the serial number. Werk Nummer is movement number. And the movement number you find on the, on the case back again. And you find here Anforderungszahl, which means um, the number of the specification record, so to speak. This is the Anforderungsnummer. And manufacturer is Hersteller, Lacher und Co. And we call them LACO today, abbreviation. Now let's close it again. I think the little mark was, where is it? Where is it? There it is. It was that way. So that the writing here is aligned with the crown. Okay. 
done. Yeah, this is always a little bit exciting to open a watch like that, especially if it's not your watch. Okay, and now let's go to the comparison of original and the modern reissue of, the, of this version. And as you can see, both are B dials, so they are very, very similar in design. And now you can see how the watch looks new, and maybe this watch looked at that way. With the bright with the bright numerals and the brightness overall great legibility and the case diameter of the modern laco is 42 millimeters the thickness is 13 and the lack width is 20 millimeters so very contemporary in size and you see that the crown has a slightly different form here you see that the the color of the case is very well made and this is not plating this is sand blasted it's a sand blasted case and here the crystal is a sapphire this is a sapphire watch, this is a hand winding model inside, it's an ETA Elaboré. So it's a really well made package you have here, around, I think around 1000 euros. And here you see what modern manufacturers often do, that put all those informations, this historic information on the outside of the case bag, because they want that the customer can, can really see them without opening the watch. But this is really realistic here. Flieger, you can see here, Geräte Nummer and everything, and so it is very, very close to this except the Laco is here, there's the Laha and Co. And the strap follows the original as well, as you can see. By the way, very, very good quality, I must say, this strap here. Really substantial, good looking, leather with a nice and rich feel, and yeah, I'm really happy with that. And, but, but the major difference, of course, is the feel if you, if you wind this. It's like that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like winding a modern, good oiled watch and not winding a tank. I must say winding this thing was more fun than winding this thing because it's so familiar. And operating is, is very simple. Um, position one and then there you go. Very easy. I think they don't have this ghost position. The old Stovas or let's say 10 year old Stovas I sometimes have this ghost position for the date function which is I think not in existence here. No. This is satisfying. <laughs> I don't like the ghost position. And now let's make room for another watch for the Time Factors version. Okay, here it is. Here is our Bida, very legible, very close, very close to the original. Look at the font. Wow, very close to the original. Very well done. Massive hands again, like the original, very bright. The case um, color is very well made, as you can see. The crown is very close to the original, almost no difference in size a little bit and yeah, a little bit in form, but very close. And the measurements are here 44 millimeters in case diameter, 22 is the lug width and the height of the watch is 14.5. And so again, a big watch, but compared to the original, it looks very contemporary. And the major difference here is the, is the case back. A see-through case back is historically, of course, not correct, but the manufacturer here wanted you to see that beautiful movement. And this is an Unitas, Unitas movement, very, very, um, yeah, very characteristic. If you have seen this movement once, then you will recognize it very easily. And it's decorated with Geneva stripes, blued, blued screws, as you can see, very beautiful, very beautiful look. Very nice, very nice look. I mean, this, this offers another quality than this one. I don't know what I like more, to be frank. Both have, have tons of charm. And operating a Unitas is simple, again. Feels more like the tank. Let's give it a proper wind. And operating um, or setting the time is, again, very simple. You have to pull the crown position one, there you go. Very easy, good, so substantial feel, and yeah, really nice piece. And insane strap, look at this. Here with, with those are not rivets, those are proper screws, some sort of book screws. And again, leather quality, just beautiful. I think the manufacturers of Beobachtungs, when they really love their leather, because you have quality over quality here. Look at this, this is really, really substantial and really good looking and a good feel and yeah. So there we are with our three watches, with our three Beobachtungsuhren. 
yeah, this is quite a sight. Very, very interesting. This was very interesting for me and I hope it was also interesting for you. Okay, and here are some wrist shots outside with good weather. This is the Time Factors watch, the PRS42, as you can see, 42 millimeters. Next one is the Laco, a little bit smaller and with that chocolate brown strap gives the watch a different look. And last but not least, the original outside over the sleeve. And you can see massive thing, not meant to be worn in a supermarket. Okay, what's the story behind the original watch from 1944? I was returning a watch to Eddie Platz in Sheffield. He's the owner of Time Factors. This was the Smith's Navigator watch. And then I wrote an email and I let him know that the watch was in the mail. And I said, thank you very much for the, for the collaboration with you. And I'm looking forward to work with you again. And Eddie is not the man of many words. And so he wrote back, do you want to see my original Beobachtungsuhr from 1944 made by Laco? And I said, um, yes, <laughs> yes, finally, finally that watch. I mean, every watch collector with a tendency to vintage timepieces wants to see once in a lifetime this watch on the table. And this was my time now. And so, Eddie, thank you very much. And dear viewer, I would really appreciate if you can give the video a thumb up, if you can share it, because I think this lineup deserves some presence on YouTube. And if you want to see more watches, if you want to see the progress of my safari jacket, my tailoring project, then please join me on Instagram. It's casepick underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention. And maybe until next time.